We're now going to transition to a sponsored video by Julia Computing. We're going to be playing that shortly. We started Julia to solve the two language problem. It has turned out to be a really powerful idea. Multiple dispatch, generic programming, specialization, differentiable programming, and so on. Hi, I'm Viral Shah, co-founder and CEO of Julia Computing. Some truly amazing things have been happening in the world as we've been faced with unprecedented challenges. We've witnessed vaccines being built with dramatic speed, electric vehicles becoming mainstream, batteries in everything. Our entire industrial stock is undergoing a major transformation as the economy decarbonizes. Never in our wildest dreams did we imagine that solving the two language problem would make it possible for us to have a small role in these big things. Many of you know about our contributions to the Julia language, SciML, and various parts of the package ecosystem. Today, I want to introduce how we are leveraging these unique capabilities of Julia to build a suite of modeling and simulation products. Hi, I'm Chris Rakakis, and I'm going to share with you how Julia Sim can enhance industrial modeling and simulation workflows. So, Julia Sim is a set of modules provided by Julia Computing. They are proprietary modules for enhancing industrial scale modeling and simulation workflows. I'm going to go through some of these details, some of these modules. Um, if you want a full overview of what's available, please check out the webinar on Julia Sim that describes the, the full module set. So the purpose of Julia Sim is that maybe you're an industrial user and you've been seeing how you know these different equation solvers and stuff are able to give a hundred times acceleration, but you know you don't want to be doing the research, right? You know the, the open source is made to be expansive. Anyone can look at the code. Everyone has all the options. But if you just want a point-and-click solution that uses you know the best choice out of all these different methods and automatically scales it to the cloud, then Julia Sim is the project is is the product for you. Um, so the Julia Sim has many different use cases. I'll go through these with the different modules. But essentially, there are use cases for Julia Sim where if you have already have a model and you want to accelerate it, if you have uh, data and you want to generate models, if you have uh, you know if you if you have models and data and you want to make the the two you know work well together, there's all of these different modules for handling these different cases. Um, so let me go through and highlight a few of them to showcase how Julia Sim, you know, is, is accomplishing what, what I described. So the Julia Sim Digital Twin Generator is a module that's all about bringing data to physics-based models. So for example, if you want to build, say, a HVAC model or a module, model of refrigerant, but all you have is the data that, that from experimental cases, um, the digital twin generator is able to take that and be able to generate these acausal models that you can then use with other physical situations. Um, the Julia Sim surrogate trainer is all about the case where if you have a large scale model such as this building model, or HVAC system, power simulation, and you want to accelerate this, we can use data driven techniques to generate a surrogate, so an emulator of the original model that can then replace the original model that, uh, in a way that is highly accurate but a lot faster. We've shown that this can outperform uh, competitors by about 570 times. Uh, the Julia Sim model optimizer is all about bringing the techniques for model calibration and um, and and auto model autocomplete, you know, the scientific machine learning, and making it automated. So you, you you bring us a modeling toolkit model, you bring us the data, and you need to click a button and say, please make the two align. Um, it can do things like automatically discover fit, missing possible missing physics and the parameters that are then required to be able to do this calibration. The Julia Sim Controls module is all about bringing model predictive control directly to, to you without um, any inter interference and also uh, make it so that way it's easy to train PID and other linear controls analysis. Um, the code piler is all about taking the code from Julia Sim and the, and the models that you have and generating code for embedded hardware so that we could be run in, in, uh, in real world use cases. So thank you very much. Hopefully this gives you a quick overview of the things that can be done with Julia Sim. If you're interested, please get in contact. Thank you very much. Pomos QSP is Julia Computing's product to do advanced pharmaceutical sciences on Julia Hub. It's targeted towards the domain of quantum systems pharmacology, or short QSP. And in this domain, we often look at large, large systems that capture, for example, a pathway in your body, but not only that pathway, but in combination with, for example, an organ, multiple organs, or the whole organism itself. And the idea is to then test how drugs affect those systems. 
And one central objective is always to do that as widely and as robustly as you just possibly can. And having the wrong computational setup in QSP can really hold you back in understanding how the drug works. Puma's QSP was designed to address this issue. It provides you the software environment where number one, you can formulate your QSP studies and number two, run them as well. So on the one hand side, it's the software package, Puma's QSP in Julia. And the other thing is the access to the hardware that you will need, which is Julia Hub. And Julia Hub can be actually accessed in two different ways, which you both can see on the screen. So number one is the interactive environment. So here you've got a Visual Studio instance on the browser. Number two will be here over an extension called Julia Hub, where you can send scripts directly. So here in our example script, we're actually creating a virtual population in order to test how the drug affects these systems for virtual patients. And we do that using Pumas QSP. And in this file, we're doing it in a linear way using the terminal, the terminal down here. But if we now want to use multiple nodes on Julia Hub, we have to modify our code a little bit. We uh, we use the package distributed and then there are a few other modifications that we will need to do but then we use the extension of julia hub select the current file which other files are needed and then we set up exactly which technical um, features we want to have for our job and at the very end we then just press this button called start job and that will start a distributed job on julia hub once it's started it will pop over here in this list of jobs and then on the very right side, you always have this, this um, icon on the very right, which will bring you to the logs that give you more information of what the job is currently doing. So the last message that you will see in these um, logs once your, if your job has been successful is that the job status will be updated to status completed. And once that has happened, you can go back into this list, press the desk icon to save your results. You can also import your results back into this interactive environment and then do further analysis, do your visualizations like in this um, plot window you're used to in your Visual Studio instance locally to really analyze your results and see if you're happy um, with what the analysis has shown you. So as a take home of this very short demonstration of Formos QSP, I hope what comes across is that we're really focusing on the two things, usability and performance. And one example is how easy we want to make it to go from a linearized code to the distributed jobs. Um, there's a lot of more information of Pumas QSP. So for example, here on the help.juliahub.com website, Pumas QSP, you can find a lot of more information. So if you're interested, feel free to check that out. Cedar EDA is our exciting new entry into the analog circuit simulation space that provides a modern, flexible, easy to use, high performance analog spice simulator, all in an open framework. To start with, we support the traditional point tool usage model of a netlist in and wave files out like HSPICE or Spectre. That's where the similarities end. Point tools created by our competitors naturally create silos in the companies that purchase them, making it more difficult to collaborate and it adds a lot of drudgery to the engineering experience. With Cedar, it is built on an open programmable framework, which encourages partnerships between teams, allowing them to build better products faster. Cedar Sim can calculate derivatives of the design parameters all the way to the performance measurements using the latest techniques in auto differentiation. This enables analog designers to better understand the important circuit parameters to improve performance. Also, optimization and machine learning with derivatives only require a fraction of the simulations. Also, machine learning models that use differential equations from the circuit that obey energy conservation laws are much better as they will not do crazy things. With derivatives and programmability, you can develop new analysis techniques that are not bound to the traditional AC, DC, and transient analysis types. Instead of dealing with circuit variations with compute intensive random sampling methods, you can create your own fast quasi analytical methods for your application. Even though Cedar Sim compiles the circuit down to fast machine code, it has a modern debugger that allows breakpoints to be set in Verilog A or measurement source code. And engineers can intuitively step line by line through the source code instead of print statements like in the 1990s. Cedar Waves handles the details of continuous time waveforms from analog simulators and makes it very easy to make reasonable analog performance measurements and build automations. 
If a measurement fails, the original signals are automatically tracked and can be plotted, saving setup, debug, and simulation time. It supports many of the interpolation methods for smooth signals, such as quadratic spline or Akima interpolation. It can plot signals of gigabytes in just a few milliseconds, all doing this while using the least amount of memory in the industry. Performance metrics can be associated with a component and carry along to a higher level simulation, so when the power consumption issue occurs at the top level, the offending component can be automatically identified, speeding up days of debug. Your teams will sleep better at night knowing analog tests are passing and the silos are not working together, being more productive and delivering predictable results faster, amplifying the creative ability of the engineers. The fastest simulation is the one you don't have to simulate. If you're tired of the manual analog flow of turning knobs and pressing buttons, you, and you know you could be more productive, then contact us as we are working with large key customers. Julia Hub is at the core of all that we do. It's the foundational infrastructure for all of our products, and it's a great place for everyone to get started with Julia on our public juliahub.com server. It's here that you can search through the open source documentation, find the packages that you're looking for, and directly use them within Pluto Notebooks and VS Code editors, where you can build out the code of your dreams. Once you're ready, Julie Hub's there, ready to spin up ad hoc clusters of hundreds or even thousands of nodes to take your code to the next level. We truly believe it's the simplest and easiest way to take your code to a cloud supercomputer for high performance computing. Of course, it also comes for enterprise, where we work with your teams to set it up within your infrastructure to hit the security requirements that you need or put it within a dedicated virtual private cloud. We have complete compliance controls where you can rest assured with our corporate compliance through SOC 2 and GDPR compliances, as well as audit trails that allow you to hit the metrics that you need to satisfy regulatory concerns. There are also additional collaboration tools and more controls that allow you to ensure that the people that need to see the code are able to see it and those that don't need to can't see it. This authentication and, and uh, authorization through your single sign-on solutions ensures that you're in control. Let's take a look at what the an enterprise server looks like here. It's a lot like our public infrastructure. The one difference is as you search through the ecosystem, you're searching not just the general registry, but you can see there are multiple registries available to me here. And I can go to my team's registry and look through all the code that's available there, find packages that I'm looking for, and even look at their documentation that's built and hosted right here on the Julia Hub server with all the greatness, uh, all the great uh, niceties of life that Documenter provides. It's a one-stop shop for everything that you do. And when you point your Julia instances, either local or hosted by Julia Hub, at your Julia Hub server, well, they have access to all of these packages just as though they were open source packages. So I can pkg.add my secret analysis uh, and not even know whether it's public or private. Either way, my company's IP is protected and secure within this dedicated host. We're taking that one step farther with the latest release of Julia Hub with the concept of projects, right? Where just publishing something to an open source registry allows you to access it, but it doesn't allow you to collaborate on and, and work on it directly. And that's what projects do. They group your resources and even jobs spun up by those resources in a way that you can work with and reason on. So here's that secret analysis and I can just open it directly in my editor brings up Visual Studio Code here in my browser and allows me to start editing right away. Uh, and, and I can look in and start making changes. Maybe I want to change the logging infrastructure a little bit here. I can change that. And we believe so deeply in, in code uh, version control that it's built into this, right? I'm able to publish my branch to my internal maintainers where they'll be able to review it and merge those changes back into the main development trunk. So that's projects, a great way to work with and, and group resources into uh, access controls. Lastly are all of our applications where we bring out the best of, of what's available here. By default, we have the Julia editor with VS Code and Pluto Notebooks. You can add your own applications, some dashboards, widgets, things. Applications that are registered within the private registries also show up here, which is a great way of working with them.
given how Julia Hub is central to everything we do, we will be changing our company name to Julia Hub. Have a great JuliaCon, and I expect to see all of you on the chat. Thank you.